So today we're going to talk about the Big Tree Tech SKR Pro version 1.2. A lot of people have been asking for this tutorial, so I've made a series of videos that I'll include in the playlist. So I'll talk about this board and why it's a favorite of everyone's. First of all, we have six steppers that we can work with. So we have our X stepper, our Y stepper, our Z stepper, our E0 stepper, our E1 stepper, and our E2 stepper. With the Z axis, we actually have two ports for a stepper motor each. In addition to that, it's possible to do spy communication, which is serial peripheral interface connection, or UART. And then you have your regular step dir drivers as well. So over here, we have our EXP1 port and we have our EXP2 port. Now I may have these reversed because I'm looking at a different angle at the board, but these are used for our display functionality being a regular LCD display. Then we have our port over here and this is used for our TFT display. So that's a touch screen display. We also have over here our thermistor connection, so we can do three hot ends and then one heat bed. I may have the order confused here from the angle that I'm at, but we also have our end stops. So we have our X minimum, our Y minimum, our Z minimum. Then we have filament detect ports that we can use of E0, E1, and E2 that correspond to filament for each one of these. Then over here, we have what's known as our spy pins. So you can connect a spy device. Then we have our power pins. These are kind of interesting because they give you several different types of power that you can use. So you have 12 volts for these two. So you may be able to use a fan for those. Then we have five volt pins, which are the next two over. And then we have 3.3 voltage pins. Below that, we have a UART set of pins that you can use right here. And then we have an I2C set of pins. Over here, we have a port for a Wi-Fi connection. We also have a USB port. Then we have a UART port. And then we have our BL Touch. And ever since SKR, Pro version 1.1, there's been a missing pin for ground. They've now added that so it's more useful. So you can connect your actual BL Touch with no problem or a servo. Then we have our auxiliary two set of pins over here. And those are actually extension pins, pardon me. And then we have our extension one set of pins. Then we have our SWD set of pins, and these are used to actually load the board with firmware if all else fails. Another thing that I need to point out before I get to the power supply stuff is that over here we have a jumper. Right now on my board, it's set to USB power because I'm about to show you how to load firmware. But normally when you run this, you're going to be on direct power, which is over here. And the reason for that is your steppers will act normally then. If you have it over on the other two set of pins and you run, for instance, UART, you'll get strange results for your actual sizing of movement. So down here, we have a fan set of pins for three fans. So you have your... Fan number two, fan number one, and fan number zero. Over here we have three ports for extruders. So we have heater number two, heater number one, and heater number zero. Then behind here we have actual power that we can use for our bed. And the output power will come out through here. Then we have, let's see our power for our board logic, and we have the power for our steppers. So just so you know, you can run either 12 or 24 volts 
on this board, but I'll be running in the tutorials 12 volts to simplify things. The other thing I do need to point out is the actual car fuses that they've added to this. This one's actually new, and that's so in some cases what will happen is you'll have an overload of power and it'll blow the fuse, but not the board. That's not all cases, but it is some of them. So now I'm going to show you how to load the firmware. So what I need to do is I am going to do this with USB power. So I'm going to open up my Rocket Tech. This is a USB device that takes SD cards. And I'm going to place this in here. So just so you know, no one's paying me or sponsoring me to do this tutorial, but I will be placing Amazon affiliate links in the description for your convenience. So I'm going to place this in the computer. And then I'm also going to move the jumper over so that we can use USB direct power when we actually load the board. So I'll show you an example of this real quick. So if I place this in here, the board powers. If I remove this and then I move this jumper over and place this in, there's no power going to the board except for it's lighting the LED. So now let's go over to the computer and I'll show you a couple things. So the first thing I want to show you on the computer is the actual board pinout diagram. This will explain where everything is and what the voltages are for like steppers and the positions of certain jumper pins that you may need to set in the future. It also shows you all the uh, pins and pin numbers to each of these things. So this will give you an idea of what your EXP ports are because this is EXP1 and this is EXP2 listed right here. So now that we know all that, what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at the manual briefly because they made it slightly confusing. You have to go into the Big Tree Tech SKR Pro version 1.1 to get to the manual for SKR2, which is in here. And that's also where you'll find the pinout diagram. So now that we know that, let's go over to VS Code. So over on BS Code, I've actually downloaded already the Marlin firmware and extracted it. And I've made a tutorial on actually how to install this that I'll put in the upper right hand corner that you can review at your convenience. But for now, I'm going to walk you through it. So I'm going to click over on Explorer. Then I'm going to say Open Folder. Then I'm going to go to my downloads folder, my first Marlin, then my second. Then I'm going to select the folder. And inside here, I'm going to click on the Marlin folder, then the source folder, then the core folder. Inside here, I need to click on boards.h to find our board. So I'm going to search on skr underscore pro. And as you can see, here is our board. So I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to copy it. Then I'm going to close out of boards.h. I'm going to minimize core and source and go to configuration.h. Inside configuration.h, I'm going to search on motherboard and I'm going to highlight the ramps because that is not our default configuration for us that we're using. So I'm going to paste what I just copied. Then I'm going to go to my serial port and I'm going to change this to negative one. That's so we can communicate with our board. And then in order to load the firmware, we have to set an environment in platformio.ini. So in order to do that, right now it's set to the Mega 2560. So knowing that our chipset is not this, we're going to have to search on SKR underscore pro and we're going to have to highlight the environment that's right here. So we'll copy this and then we'll scroll up to the top and we'll paste it where the Mega 2560 is located. 
So now that we're all set, there's a couple other things we need to consider. You may have failures on your first compile. It's totally normal. There may be issues with the order in which they're building the actual firmware. But the first step you want to do to start off clean is to do a clean, which is this little garbage can down here. But the reason that you want to do that is because in .pio right now, we have the Mega 2560 default configuration that we want to wipe out. So I'm going to click on this and show you what happens. So now if we go to the .pio folder, it's gone. So now we can actually build. Now when the build takes place, it usually pulls down all of the configurations it needs via platform I.O. That's why we use it with this now. It simplifies things so that you don't have to search for stuff. But if you do have a failure during your compile, first hit the checkbox a second time and make sure that it finishes compiling. If it doesn't, that means that there's probably an error in your program that you'll need to fix. And so find the very first error that you encounter in the list up here Unfortunately, it didn't happen this time. I was kind of hoping it would. And then correct that. If there are errors after that, ignore those because they might be a cascade of errors that you may have to deal with because of the first error. So now that we know that, now we need to go back over to .pio, then the Big Tree Tech SKR Pro folder, then right click on firmware.bin, and send this, or excuse me, reveal this in File Explorer. Inside File Explorer, what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and we're gonna send this to our D drive where our SD card resides. On our D drive, let's check to make sure it made it there, which it did, and you can see the time and how it matches. And you also notice that it says firmware.cur here. That was from a previous firmware load that I did. And so what happens is firmware.bin, after it loads, is converted to firmware.cur in all capital letters, meaning current firmware. If you ever need to reload your current firmware, what you can do is rename it to firmware.bin in lowercase, and then load it into your SD drive, and it will load and change to cur. So now that we have that done, let's go back over to the desktop where we have the board. I'm going to remove the card from the computer and I'm going to place it inside here. So now that it's inside here, there's going to be a flashing light in the center of the board, probably green when I plug this in. That's the firmware loading. So now when that's complete, what we can do now is actually verify that it worked. But I do have to point out that currently we don't have end stops connected. So they're all going to come up as triggered. So you'll see why in a second that I'm going to do that. That's just confirming communication with the board that I'm doing. So I'm going to go over to platform or excuse me, not platform IO. I'm going to go over to Proner face. And inside Pronerface, what I'm going to do is I want to connect. Now, there's a problem with connecting because right now it says COM port 1, which is your computer's normal COM port. And so we have to find ours. So I only have the board connected. So I'm going to go over to Device Manager. And inside Device Manager, I'm going to bring it up over here so you can see. There is a COM port designation. So it says 17. So now we know what the COM port is. We're going to go over to where it says COM port 1. We're going to highlight it and we're going to add a 7. Then we're going to click connect. And as you can see, it says connecting and printer is now online. So what we're going to do next is we're actually going to type M119. This checks the status of the end stops and this also helps us confirm that we're connected to the board. And I'm going to press enter. So as you can see, it says triggered for everything. 
and that is what we expected because nothing is connected. So if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. And thank you for your time.